Why don't you all stand with me and let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. My name is Landon. I want to welcome everybody online. We're so glad that you're here with us today and just thankful that you can join us. And I'm going to read from Psalm 95, verses uh, 6 and 7. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His land. One of the things that I've been feeling in my spirit today is that God is wanting us to have encounters with His glory, even in the pre-service prayer. Just the weightiness of God's presence was amongst us. And sometimes what happens is we can mistake the weightiness of God's presence for the heaviness of the enemy. The enemy likes to come and tell us to try to, to get out of the, of the weightiness. But we, we've decided that we just want to embrace the weightiness of God, the kabod, the weightiness of His glory. Can you, do you, understand, you comprehend what I'm saying? And so today, as we prepare our hearts to praise and worship the Lord, let's invite Him to move amongst us in His glory that the weightiness of the goodness of God would be manifest amongst us. Even at home, I'm encouraging you, I want to encourage you to, to lean into His goodness, to lean into His grace. And we pray for an omnipresent miracle today. For those of you who can't be with us, that you would experience the depth of His presence, even in the same way that we're experiencing it here. So Father, in Jesus' name, let's lift up holy hands all over this place. And let's begin to lift up our voices in thanksgiving. Just lift up your voice in thanksgiving. God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your tremendous love for me and the way you pour out your spirit. Lord, we thank you that you're for us. If you're for us, who can be against us? Lord, we lean into the wonder of your grace and we invite you to move amongst us in glory. We invite you to move amongst us in power. We invite your kingdom to come and be manifest amongst us. Holy Spirit, we know you're here, but we invite you to manifest yourself amongst us as we worship you. So Father, we lift up your name. We bless your name and we glorify you in this place. In Jesus' name. And everybody said a great big? Amen. Amen. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Let's lift him up together. I was buried beneath my shame. You can carry that kind of weight. It was not true.
just feel that this would be the moment that I'd like to spend some time. Jenna, can you give me some Kleenex? Um, many of you would have heard this week that uh, uh, sadly we we lost Doug um, to the stroke that he that he suffered. I just, I felt that um, it would be appropriate to maybe just take a moment and let you experience just sort of the, the time we had at the graveside and um, we'll, we'll be planning on some form of, some form of memorial later on for the whole family to get together. Um, so I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, on Monday, we found out that, that I could have permission. You can be seated if you wish for a moment. We're going to take a couple moments. Uh, I had, as, as, a, as a pastor, I was given permission to go and, and actually be there on Monday evening. So I arrived at around 8 o'clock. And uh, Doug, yeah, you can, could you bring that out for me? Yeah, it's right, right here. Um, just, I, I just need something to hold my stuff. Um, so I went in at about eight o'clock. Doug was paralyzed completely on his right hand side, um, but he was fully cognizant in the sense that he knew who was in the room. He knew when people were with him, and he also uh, knew. Thank you. That's perfect. He knew. Uh, you know, that you were there, he understood, and he could respond, he could move his left arm, and uh, he would wave to you, he'd hold your hand, and, and he would nod, and, and, um, and so we got to just, I got to sit there with our friend, and hold his hand, and um, love on him, and um, then Karen, kind of threw me a curveball. She said, uh, you know, Doug, you know how much Doug loves worshiping, and so so we we worshiped together, and I sang some of the sweet old songs that he loved, and he lifted up his hand and worshiped, and would kind of direct me, <laughs> tell me to sing it again, <laughs> tell me to slow down, or <laughs> he said he really was. He, he couldn't sing along, but he was mouthing the words and nodding and grabbing me. And boy, that man sure loved, sure loved worship, didn't he? Now listen, I am heartbroken. The Bible says that, that blessed are the passing of his saints. But it's appropriate for us to be heartbroken, not because we're disappointed that God didn't raise him up, uh, because we win either way. Either he goes home and graduates, or he rises up. You know, he needed he needed new everything, and and that's what we prayed for, um, and we didn't see it. And and I'm okay. I don't like the mystery, family. We we don't need to like the mystery, but we need to be able to accept it, right? And in the midst of it, to worship the Lord. Because this is the beauty of our, our lives right now as we get this opportunity to be in the tension and worship God in tension. Doug's not worshiping in tension anymore. He, he, he's with his living eyes seeing the beauty of the King and, and, and is rejoicing. And, and, uh, but we had this beautiful time where, where we worshiped together. And... Uh, I gave him a hug and a kiss and told him how much we loved him and and uh, then spent a little time with Karen and navigating through the challenge of uh, what we thought would be the next few months. Um, and then I, I got hopped down into my car and as I drove away, um, about, oh, 10 minutes into my drive, Karen called me and she said, Pastor Landon Doug has, has gone to be with Jesus. And so, he, so, so we, we, we let him go, right? We, we let him go. And, and rejoice. 
And then as I think you can see some of the pictures, we had a beautiful time of remembrance uh, at the graveside. And Pastor Amy, Pastor Josh, Katie Lee, Mike Cappy, and Karen and her kids were there. And I shared that precious in the sight of the Lord is the passing of his saints. I shared the scripture that we don't need to be ignorant because we don't grieve as the world grieves, but we grieve with hope. But we grieve nonetheless. And I don't believe that there's anything more beautiful than the grieving of a loving family in Christ. I just have never seen anything that's more beautiful. <laughs> and boy, we've been grieving. Doug was our friend. I was looking over where he sat and how he'd be up there worshiping and finding people and hugging them and blessing them. And, and uh, the way that he would, <laughs> that man would cry so fast. Man, as soon as he felt the presence of the Lord, he'd start to cry. He was so sensitive to that. Pastor Amy, the kids, the kids led a, love, a, a couple of songs, and then Pastor Amy read the love chapter. And uh, Amy, would you come and would you read the love chapter? asked me to read a scripture at the graveside on Friday and I had lots of scriptures in my mind and I couldn't get away from 1 Corinthians 13 because Doug lived it out so perfectly. Um, everything about him was so loving and kind and so I want to read this in honor of him and, and I actually read it from his own Bible when we were at the graveside and it was highlighted I knew that he had encountered God in that scripture and that it had transformed him. If I could speak in all the languages of the earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clingy symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge and if I had such faith I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Karen told me the week before, like in between when he um, had just had the stroke, she said he's a new man in the last 10 years. He used to be so shy and quiet. And she was the one going around talking to people. And she said, now she was the one waiting for him, talking to everybody at church. And loving everybody and he'd always come up to me and give me a big side hug and tell me he loved me and encourage me and he came every Wednesday night to worship yeah. came every Monday to RIA to learn about prophecy and to grow in his ability to prophesy and encourage people he had such an encouragement gift on two occasions he gave me a word straight from the father's heart this is Doug, he represents. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. And Karen, I know you're watching. And I know that your love has not lost its faith. That you endured and you prayed and you believed for a miracle till his last breath. And God honors that. And we love you. Just 
read the last part of the scripture. It says these three will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. Oh, my greatest of these is love. So, Doug, your legacy lives on as we give each other side hugs and say, bless you, bless you, bless you. Yes. Pastor Amy shared that chapter. and I shared that Doug did those things. He was patient. He was kind. He always hoped the best. He always believed the best. His jokes, not so much. He, he tried his best. And I'll miss him very, very much. And I know we will. Because his absence leaves a, a, a great, a great hole. And we can fill it, and we will. Because that's what family does. But he left us a legacy. He left an example for us. I shared that he left footprints for us to follow, and he had big feet. But he left a legacy. He left an example, and that's what heroes do. And Doug really was a hero amongst us. Tenderly and gently with honor, we laid his body to rest, wept together, and then we shared, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. He guides my path in righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I would walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'd fear no evil because he's with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And then we took a moment, and then we said, Surely mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. And Doug will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Pastor Josh led us in a beautiful song. What's it called? The Generation Song? What's it? The Blessing? saying as a, as a representative of many generations honoring Doug's legacy and that was our time together worship team if you'd prepare yourselves we're going to worship just a little bit more whatever you feel in your heart honey I trust you As we prepare to worship, stay standing if you would. I want to remind you that we will not stop pressing in for miracles when it appears impossible. That we will not rest and back away because of fear of loss, but rather we'll face the loss with faith. And we're willing to face the challenge with faith. Because the same faith that ascends the mountain in Hebrews chapter 11, that talks of all the amazing things that happen, is the same faith that's celebrated by God on the other side of the mountain when people died, when people went through agony, when people went through suffering. And God celebrated both sides as the same faith. The faith of the breakthrough is as valuable to the Lord as the faith that doesn't see the breakthrough. We didn't see the breakthrough this time. And now we're having to manage the tension of walking out the mystery of not knowing why. Because what we know to be true and what we've experienced are two different things and that's the tension that we're in. And what we do with that tension is we worship in it. We worship Him and we lift up His name and we bless Him. Regardless of not understanding, we don't need to understand to, 
to recognize and to extol his goodness and his grace. My friends, my heart is just shattered. I love that guy. I know you guys did too. I mean, we just, there's a problem with this whole family of God thing is we get under each, each other's skin and it hurts when stuff happens to one another. But we mourn not as those without hope. We mourn as those knowing that Doug is every tear now. Pastor Amy said this, it was so beautiful. She said, I just saw how God would be, or Doug would be so quick to cry in the presence of God and now he's able to be quick to laugh as he's just enjoying the wonder of heaven. So let's, even though we're in pain, let's join with him as he's worshiping the Father. Let's do the same. So go ahead, team, just lead us. We'll follow you.
Father, we, we lean into your grace right now. Faithful and true, we lean into your grace. God, we give you our grief. We pray for Karen. We pray for Angela. We pray for Tim. We, give you, we, just, we intercede, God, over their lives and as we all grieve together and certainly as they grieve at the intensity of their loss. We lean into you because you're good. You're faithful. Father, we, 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 we lean into the tension of what we feel uh, in your grace. We remain committed, Lord, to continue to move forward in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Amen.